Waters Lane. My husband and I own Waters Garden Center. This class is plants, easy to grow plants for the mountains. Uh, so it's kind of an open-ended class there to have that. So uh, when I read the description of the class, so Ken writes the descriptions and he gets kind of flowery sometimes. What <laughs> <laughs> was he after when he wrote that? So I thought, well, and then it said like combinations put together, and so I, it kind of left it open. So um, I figured, what the heck? We'll just bring up a lot of different types of plants, and we'll also kind of leave it open to questions. So along the way, if you have questions, just raise your hand, that'd be great. And we'll leave time at the end for questions as well. So uh, how many people are new to the area, or relatively new? Oh my gosh, good view, exciting, welcome. Uh, so, you know, gardening here is different. And a lot of times, uh, you know, people are moving in from areas where either, like California, where it's, you don't really have a dormant period. It's always growing, it's always green. Uh, and you move here and things go dormant in the wintertime. You're like, oh my gosh, everything's dead. Uh, but we're just, we just have a dormant period. Or people move from uh, Midwest where things go dormant for a really long time, uh, or things, a lot of things uh, don't really winter over there. Or you have to uh, wrap things up so tightly, you know, you got mulch, you got to put burlap around, uh, you know, it's just a different type of gardening. So here it's a little bit different. Um, so we can talk about that, you know, as we go along too. But we, the nice thing about Prescott is we have those mild four seasons. So it's terrific that we get the four seasons, and they're usually mild. Although this summer we had a really hot period, uh, it was a little rough on things. But we have the nice mild four seasons, so that allows us to grow a lot of different things. Um, and it allows us to do a four season gardening. So the thing that I like about it is we can have the four seasons of, of, of color and texture and different types of gardening. The thing that drives me nuts is uh, people move here or the landscapers or whatever. Uh, there's a lot of rock here. You guys notice that? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of rock here. So, and I get it. I mean, people are moving from other areas. They mowed their lawn for 30 years, and they're like, I'm selling the lawnmower, and I'm never going to mow again. I get that. I really, really get that. But it doesn't mean you got to rock over and have a moonscape, right? You can have something besides. Have something besides 30 ton of rock in your yard and have it be attractive. So it's probably one of my what's this thing? I'm like, there's a bug. <laughs> <laughs> you can have something besides a lot of rock in your yard and have it be attractive. You can have something besides all evergreen. You can have something besides all plants in your yards that go completely dormant in the wintertime. So in the winter your yard is nothing going on uh, so because we have those mild four seasons we can have terrific looking yards year round here so um, that's my big thing but plants in when you're looking at landscaping your yard think about the four seasons and what you can do to have your yard look nice year round so uh, the other thing that kind of drives me a little bonkers is, is people, and I get it, you know, you come home, you pull into your house, you push your button for your garage door, you pull in and you push the button behind you and you never really look at your yard from the front, do you? Yeah. So, and which is, and maybe it's okay, maybe you don't really care about your front yard your neighbors might, but <laughs> you don't. But it's it's so important to maybe step across the street and look at the front of your house. 
what does it look like from the front? You know, are you, is there, is there color in the front? You know, are you, do you see just rock? Are the trees in a weird spot? Is there anything interesting about your home? You know, some people don't really care about their front yard, and maybe if that's not your big thing, it doesn't matter. But if you do, I would say step across the street and take a look. See what it looks like across the street. The other thing is, what does it look like in spring? What does it look like in the summer? What about in the fall, in the winter? Because, there, because we have those four seasons, it can make a difference what it looks like. Um, the other thing is inside your house looking out. A lot of us, you know, from your kitchen window or from your office window, when you're looking out, what does it look like to you? So in our house, our friends, so our kids are all gone, yay! Yes. So we took one of our windows is Ken's office, and um, excuse me. So now Ken's office is there, and he gets all creative writing in there, and we look out front. And we kind of looked at it and went, ew, you know, it wasn't a lot exciting going on as he looked out the front window. So we're like, okay, what can we do to make this prettier looking out? What, what, when we're looking out, we'll make it more creative and more fun to look at. Uh, so we took that and we made a little courtyard area. We put a little bubbler fountain in there. And now the birds come in in the spring and he watches the birds and it's, it's fun looking out. So what are those areas that you're looking at? If you're standing at the kitchen window and you're doing your dishes or you're cooking a lot and you're looking out in that area a lot, what do you want to see? You know, if it's just boring, if it's just a brick wall or it's your neighbor's house or your neighbor's kitchen window, uh, what do you want to see from that space? That's important to you, right? Uh, or your back patio. Maybe you don't care about your front yard, but you use your back deck a lot, or you use your back patio a lot. What do you want to see from that space that's important to you? Uh, maybe you don't go outside a lot, but you're, you've got a back window you look at a lot. Or you use your back deck a lot. You like to go out there and read in the summertime. Or it's too hot in the summer, but you like to go out in the fall. And fall is important to you. And you want to go out in that deck in the fall, or you use your fire pit or whatever. So what space is important to you? And whatever that space is, change that space. If that space is boring, if it's unappealing, if it doesn't make you happy, then change that space. I guess that's where we'll start from because there's so many fun things you can do. So I'm into big four season color. So if we start with the four seasons being spring, so spring is always what? New growth, it's spring blossoms, it's uh, that reawakening after winter, right? So I was trying to think, because we're in fall now, so there's not a lot of springs <laughs> up here. Uh, but if you're thinking of, of trees is like the big thing for spring, so, uh, and there's some great ones for spring. So, especially in the mountains, like you were talking about, you were asking about small trees. So the, the ornamental trees that have great spring color. So the, the KV plum, which is the ornamental plum, it's, to me, is like a great, great tree because it has the spring blossoms. So the blossom on it is kind of a, a pink, light pink to white. And it's, it's used around here a lot. So every spring when it blooms, people call me and go, what's that tree? Um, so it's, it's a great spring blooming tree. And then it puts on that kind of dark purpley mauve uh, leaf to it. Great tree because it doesn't get huge and it doesn't get a lot of diseases. And once it's established, it is a very drought tolerant tree. So if you're looking for tree for color, uh, great spring because it blooms, great color in the summertime because instead of just being green, 
it's got that mauve purple leaf to it. So if you've got a lot of green going on in the yard, you want to break that up, that purpley mauve leaf uh, really changes color. You know, it gives you something different to look at in the yard. Uh, another great spring bloomer for a tree is the red bud. So the red buds have that really uh, almost fuchsia colored blossom. It's just like dark, dark pink, fuchsia colored, beautiful in the springtime. And then it puts on a nice green leaf, really pretty green leaf in the summertime. Its uh, fall color is kind of a, a real pretty yellow golden color. So you get that three season color on that one. Uh, the ornamental pears. So the ornamental pears have a white blossom to them. Real pretty in the spring with a white blossom. Nice green foliage in the summertime. And then you get a third season because you get beautiful fall color. So I noticed they're usually kind of the last ones to turn color in the fall. But I noticed my neighbors was starting to turn a little early this year, which kind of surprised me. Uh, but it is starting to turn. So a lot of those trees that give you three season color, fabulous. So the, the ornamental plums, uh, they do get big. They get about 25, 30 foot tall. But get, you're getting three seasons of color out of them, which is fabulous. So if you're looking for a big tree with some color, that's a great one to go with. Um, if you're looking for a smaller, there's a Sestina plum, which is more of a shrubby. Uh, it is, it's like the KV plum, but more of a shrubby, smaller one. So it does the same blossom, kind of that white pink blossom with the purple leaf, uh, but it's more of a shrub form. So if you need something smaller, shrubby to go into the landscape, that one would work for you. Uh, Yes, Which one was that again? Sestina plum. Don't ask me to spell it because I can't. Talk to the first plum that's <laughs> variety you spoke of, what was that one again? Uh, KB plum. KB, thank it you. stands for Crowder Vesuvius. Um, it, it has some cousins like Thundercloud uh, is another variety. And I think there's also, uh, it has another cousin as well. I can't think of off the top of my head. But they're all ornamental plums. Uh, but given the right conditions, like this year, uh, you'll see a lot of them maybe in your neighborhoods produced a fruit. Um, given the right conditions, they will sometimes produce a fruit. This year they did. Everything produced a fruit this year. <laughs> and this year they did. So, uh, but it doesn't always happen. Uh, another really good uh, spring tree is the crab, crab apples. Crab apples have beautiful blossoms. Uh, another great tree for here just because it is a very drought hardy once it's established, pretty disease resistant. Uh, so the crab apples do terrific. And there's one called the prairie fire crab apple will give you beautiful fall color, just like a bright orangey red fall color. So that's another good three season tree. Uh, Autumn Brilliant Service Berry. It's not one that's real commonly known. It's a short tree too. Autumn Brilliant Service Berry. It has a white blossom, um, green leaf. It does put on a little fruit, but the birds love it. So if you're attracting birds, you want to bring birds in, great one for birds. And it also has terrific fall color, kind of an orangey red fall color. Um, there, if you're looking for shrubs for spring, of course, lilacs. Everybody loves lilacs, right? For scythia, for uh, spring color, for scythia are usually the first ones to bloom around here, and they have that real yellow. They're just like the whole bush will be yellow. So it, it blooms before it puts on leaves. So for Scythia, uh, there is a <coughs> ornamental almond that is a little three foot guy that is pink. So there's a lot of spring blooming things that I love that just kind of announce, oh, spring is here. I think every yard 
need some spring blooming stuff because it just gets you excited. After winter, you're just like, oh, I need some color. And the spring blooming stuff brings that to you. And it's not like you gotta have a whole yard of spring blooming stuff, but just some stuff tucked in there with your evergreen shrubs. You just gotta have that. It's just so important to just have that pop of color after the long winter. So spring blooming, great. Then after the spray, we kind of move into the summer stuff. So with the summer, I guess we should hit on the basics, which is also your, your evergreen stuff. So evergreens are those things that just stay, they're just always green. So those are your, your basics, your, your bread and butter, they're just the, the I'm not sure the word I'm looking for, but they're the things that you're always going to need in your yard that just kind of tie your yard together. The foundation, that's the word I'm looking for, the foundation of your home, of your landscape. Um, so some good foundation plants, I'll just point out that they brought up here. If you're looking for tall stuff, you need a block, if you need uh, plants kind of on the corner of your home or a good screening plant. This is uh, Spartan Juniper. Spartan Juniper, a lot of people freak out when I say the word Juniper because they just think, allergies! Uh, these Junipers are not your allergy-inducing Junipers, okay? The ones that cause the allergies are our native. That's just me. The native junipers, the big the alligator, those are the ones that cause the problems. These, these junipers are not our problem junipers. Don't be afraid to use them in your home. They're not going to wreak havoc on you and your neighbors. Spartan juniper gets about 12 to 15 feet tall, gets about 3 to 5 foot wide. It is truly a no muss, no fuss plant. You're not going to be doing a lot of trimming on it. Uh, it kind of takes care of itself. There are really no insects that tend to get into it. It is a good base plant for you. Uh, once it is established, it's a very drought hardy plant. Uh, so the junipers are terrific for that. Uh, they really, really, really don't like to be over water. So they're a good base plant for our area. Uh, it's, it's, it's truly a good screening plant if you don't need something truly overly tall. Um, another really good juniper that I like, you need something smaller. This is Sea of Gold. The thing I like about the Sea of Gold, it gets about uh, three foot by four foot. The thing I like about Sea of Gold is the new growth on it. It has a little bit of a yellow tip to it. Uh, so it kind of gives you color out in the yard. Especially if you, have a, if you have not a lot of color going on in your yard, this can give you color. Now some people look at it, it, it I guess it's a personal taste kind of thing. Some people go, well, you know, it kind of looks like it needs food. Oh. <laughs> and I get that, I understand that. Some people don't like yellow, you know, it's like, never mind. I think it's very attractive because it kind of gives you a two-tone color. It's another way of bringing color out into the yard. Uh, so it's a good base plant. Yes, sir. Is it a spreader? Will it will it spread? It not. It gives you about four feet, so it's not a great big spreader. Stays prostrate. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I have these out in my yard. I think I have three, three out in the yard. And I like it from our top deck. We can look down on them. Very, very pretty out there because, like I said, it's, it, especially in the winter time, because these are going to stay evergreen. So it's a good way of color out in my yard, even in the winter time. I'm seeing color out in there. Yes, sir. Uh, it can be trained to go down the wall, but just realize it's only going to go maybe three to three to four feet down maximum. So I don't know how long your wall is. Yeah, yeah, it will do that. But nice, pretty low maintenance, easy care plant to throw out in the yard to give you a good base. 
It's a good foundation plant. Will it always have the yellow tint to it? Yes. Well, this is Sea of Gold. There's another one real similar called Old Gold. I think it's kind of whichever vendor happened to go They're very, very similar. Uh, another good juniper. This is Wichita Blue. It's almost identical to the Spartan as far as height and width. You just get more of a blue look instead of a green look. And does all of that, as it gets older, does the blue turn green and then the new growth? Um, you'll see a little bit more green inside, but it should stay more blue. That's really pretty. Mm -hmm. uh, another trick to keeping it more blue, because we're so very alkaline here, sometimes you'll, it may tend to go a little bit more green, uh, but if you put the soil sulfur on it once a year, uh, keeping it mulched on it will keep that alkalinity down and keep it more blue as well. Uh, so the Wichita Blue Juniper, they're again 12 to 15 foot tall, about 3 to 5 foot wide. So another good screen plant or a spot if you need something tall, corners of the house, against the fence, uh, to create some height, it's a good one to use. Is the blue uh, blue Point is, even though they call it Blue Point, it's a little more green. It's not quite as gray blue. And how about the height in the? Uh, the height's about the same. The width is wider. I think it gets six to eight feet wide. Thanks. Um, let's see if there's any other. The other one we don't have up here, but is a really good uh, screen plant or something for height is the Arizona cypress. So Arizona cypress uh, is truly a native plant for here, but it does get really tall. So probably 25, 30 foot tall and five to eight feet wide. Not well, maybe more than that, I'd say eight to 10 feet wide. So really good plant for screening if you can take the height. How fast yes. do they grow? Arizona cypress? Uh, at least a good foot a year. If it's a happy camper in a good spot, a foot and a half, maybe two. What about the junipers? Junipers, I would say eight to 12 inches a year. So if you need a really good base plant for really good height, good screening height, I would look at the Arizona Cypress. Uh, the other one I would look at would be the Deodor Cedar. Uh, Deodor cedar probably get 25, 30 foot tall, maybe even a little bit taller with age, and they probably get 15 to 20 foot wide. So big, You've got to have the yard for it. The good thing. Evergreen plants that are terrific. So this is another evergreen, another good way to bring color into the yard is evergreens that are variegated. So this is Silver King Euonymus. So it's always going to have these leaves on it. Silver King Euonymus. Don't ask me to spell Euonymus. I can't. Uh, so it's always going to have leaves on it and the leaves are always going to be variegated. So you're always going to have that two-tone color. So the Euonymus family is a huge family of plants. Some that are very, very tall, and there's some that are low growing uh, and, and grow out quite wide. Silver King uh, also has some cousins. There's Chilopsis, Gold Spot, uh, probably a few others. The Gold Spot is uh, very pretty as well, but it's very yellow and green. Um, and I like it. I like it personally. Some people look at it and go, ew. You know, <laughs> but it's one of those things that if you like variegated plants, it's a great way to bring color into the yard without having something that's blooming all the time, but it brings color into the yard because you're always getting two tones on the plant. Um, some people really cannot stand variegated plants at all. And it's a personal choice and I get it, you know. It's up to you what you like in your yard. Uh, but to me, it's a great way to bring color in, especially in there again, in the winter time, 
when everything else has kind of lost its leaves and it's gray and nothing else is going on, this is a way to get color into your yard. Uh, so I wish I had the gold pot. I looked out in the yard, we're out of it right now, but uh, some people don't like yellow, there again. But look at the Euonymus family if you're looking to bring some color into the yard. The only thing I would caution you on is if you have a heavy deer bunny presence in your area, don't do it unless your yard is fenced because the Euonymus is definitely on the deer diet. They love <laughs> the Euonymus. Uh, but there is a plant called Eliagnus, Silverberry Eliagnus, that they leave alone. But it also has a nice variegated leaf to it, and the deer don't like it. So if you still like that uh, variegated look, but you got deer presence, talk to us. We can steer you towards some plants that they don't like. But using variegated plants is a great way to bring color in. Uh, so, so think about that when you're... Do prong plants like that too? That I don't know, but my guess is they would probably would. Mm -hmm. And how tall is that get? Uh, Silver King probably gets about six foot tall. Yeah. And about four to five foot wide. What was the other one you said that deers don't like? Ellie Agnes. I know. Yeah. Don't ask me to spell it. Uh, go buy Silver Bear. Okay. Silver Bear? Silver, silver berry. Yeah. Uh, another really good color evergreen. Uh, oh my gosh, it's heavy. Okay, so this is Nandina. This particular one is probably, I don't see the tag, but this one is either a Gulf Stream or Sienna Sunrise. So um, this one gets about three foot tall. It's another really good foundation plant for spots where you don't need anything really tall, but you want something up. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Think about, I love about this one is the new growth on it is always gonna have red. So it's really pretty because it's bringing it, you get that red tone off of it. And the fall color on it is really, it's gonna be more red. So the cooler we get, the more red is gonna come off of it. And it doesn't get overly large. So it's good to put on those walkways uh, by your front door, because it's not gonna get huge. It's not gonna take over a space. It behaves itself very, very nicely. Yes. <laughs> It can take sun, it can also take a spot where it's getting some shade as well. Uh, just a nice little plant. It has a friend. So this one, so this is standard mandina or heavenly bamboo. So this one gets bigger. This can get up to six feet tall. The thing I like about this one is it produces red berries. So in the winter time, fall into winter, it will have these big clusters of red berries on it. So nice in the winter time because you're looking out or you're walking by, it has these gorgeous <laughs> clusters of red berries. Absolutely beautiful. It can get bigger. So it's not one you're gonna wanna put by a front walkway or a space that's smaller. You wanna get it, give it some room further out in the yard, up against a wall, because it's gonna to wanna to get a little bit bigger. It's a little bit rangier than this guy. This guy's very well behaved, but he doesn't produce the red berries. So you gotta decide what you want. You want something well behaved or red berries? Do, do both of those send out shoots and just keep? No, no, they're not, even though they, they call them bamboos, they're not a bamboo. So they do not send runners uh, they're not going to, you know, show up in your yard, your neighbor's yard, and down the road. Uh, is that domestic? Yes. Yeah, <coughs> domestic. Got it. They are, uh, like I said, evergreen, with the exception being if we get cold, like crazy cold in the wintertime, 
and we stay cold for kind of an extended period, they will drop their leaves. They'll go, it's really cold, I'm going to bed. And they'll drop their leaves, but as soon as we warm back up a little bit, they'll relieve. So there are, so if you, if you get one and it drops its leaves, don't call me and go, it dropped its leaves. <laughs> Just be patient and know it will pop its leaves back out of it. Other nice evergreens. Of course, most of you guys are all familiar with the Colorado blue spruce. Of course, most of them get nice and big, big Christmas tree out in New York. This one is the Globosa. So it's a nice little rounded, little dwarf evergreen. So he's great. There again, you can grow it in pots. If you want to put it in a pot, you could certainly do that. Also great around the walkways. Or if you just have a smaller yard, but you want a nice evergreen out in there, this is a nice little globosa evergreen. Really pretty out in the yard because of the blue color. One of my favorites. Which a lot of the prices do you talking about? The Globosa gets, I think, a maximum three to four foot. Oh. And probably the same width. So it's more like a shrub. Right. And they also make this um, on a standard, so they graft it onto a, onto a, a stake, kind of more or less. So it'll be, you know, you have the uh, trunk and then the ball on the top, which is kind of unusual, but it looks really terrific in a pot because uh, then you can put some plants around the bottom of it. Like right, right, like a topiary. Yes, sir. How much care? How much water? Uh, like, like a standard evergreen, uh, you know, twice a week, the first year it's planted, and then once a week I get, yeah, after that. So it, most of your evergreens don't want a lot of water. They're not a really thirsty plant. Twice a year for the first year? Twice a week for the first year, once a week after that. Okay, because we planted some Arizona cypress in April and May. We were going to start cutting back to once a week, but we should continue. I would keep it uh, twice a week until the end of November okay. and then next year. She was asking about the watering schedule for newly planted plants. Yeah. Uh, so we recommend anytime you have a newly planted plant. So if you plant it in March, anytime from March until the end of November, you want to water twice a week. Depends. I can't answer that directly because it depends on the size of the plant. So, but a twice a week watering. Winter watering is twice a month. And then your next growing season, which would be March on, you water once a week, but you increase the amount of water that you're giving, but you don't, you don't water as frequently. But we can cover that more later if you have more questions. Um, so kind of, we kind of hit on some of the evergreens. So every good yard should have some evergreens, right? So that's your foundation, your base. Then you need some good color to throw into that yard. Oh, I'll hit these since they're up here. So this is a box leaf euonymus. Nice little dainty little plant. Great. There again, around those walkways, or spaces where you need something well behaved that's not gonna get overly large. But even in the dead of winter, it's gonna look like this. So every yard needs some good foundational evergreens. If your yard is all deciduous stuff, it's gonna go dormant in the winter time, it's gonna look really boring in the winter. So you need some good base evergreens. But if your yard is only evergreen, it's gonna look really boring in the summertime. <laughs> You're not gonna have anything that's blooming in the summertime. So summer things that bloom are true. So I'm gonna start. Let's 
So this is a great summer bloomer. This is Potentia. The reason I like this as a summer bloomer is because it literally blooms all summer long. That's one reason I like it, because you get so much bloom off of it. So this gets about three by three. Pretty yellow blossoms. It also has some, there's some that bloom white, some that bloom pink. They came out with one that's supposed to bloom orange, but it, it always comes back to yellow. So just buy the yellow if you have it. <laughs> but it literally will bloom all summer long. It is also, once it's established, very drought hardy, but you gotta get it established. It can be a little thirsty until it's established. So potent to you. Nice. Yes. Be a tractor? Um, not heavily. I mean anything that blooms is gonna attract some bees, right? That's what they do. But it's not a heavy bee attractor. Container? It will grow in a container, yes. It will go dormant in the winter time. So in the winter, it's gonna be sticks and it's just gonna be sticks. Okay, but that's okay because you got some nice evergreens to look at. Do deers like it? They typically leave it alone. And I say typically because <laughs> you never know. Uh, okay, we were talking about bees. <laughs> so this is Russian sage. Bees love Russian sage. Don't put it by your front door. <laughs> the other thing about Russian sage, it, it's a curse and a blessing all at the same time. It blooms all summer long. It is incredibly hardy, incredibly drought hardy. It also can take over the planet. It will spread. It will spread by root. It will spread by seed. Um, but it's a great plant. If you've got a big yard and you don't mind that maybe it spreads, it's okay. If you have a very small yard or it really bites you and things spread, don't put it in. So I always give a cautionary tale about Russian sage. Yes, you see it all over town. Yes, it is a great, you put this in, you water it the first year, you can take it off the water, and you never have to water it again. But always comes with a word of caution. So just be wary if you plant it, because you could have a whole yard full of Russian sage. Yes. Can you prune it? You can prune it. It wants to be pruned. Typically you prune it when it's dormant, about February. You just whack it back until it's, you know, about that far. I even pruned mine um, June. I, I trimmed it back again because it was getting kind of rangy. So I pruned it back and it's back and full again. So yeah, you can trim this back and try to keep it contained. Uh, if yours is getting really floppy and big, it may be because you're watering it too much. You can just really cut it back. They do make, uh, so there's Russian sage, it gets about four to five foot tall, five foot wide. They've also come out with little spire, uh, which is about four foot by four foot. They come out with lacy blue, which is supposed to be a dwarf variety. So they are coming out with some smaller, more manageable ones, but it's still gonna run, it's still gonna see. So that's my caution with it. Be careful. What if you put in a pot? Say again? What if you put in a pot? You can grow it in a pot, but it's still, the seed's gonna <laughs> boil. So you've been warned, okay? Great right, plant, but be careful. This is another really good, so this is yarrow. I love this plant. So yarrow also comes uh, in white, yellow, uh, red, peach. They're coming out with new colors all the time. Uh, but in just a really nice, there again, pop of color out in the yard, but low maintenance, easy to take care of. Gonna go dormant in the winter time. But that's okay because we have other stuff going on. Uh, 
what is that? 18 inches? And this one, it will recede, but it's not an aggressive receding. Well, there's a native yarrow, which is white, that will spread. That's the native, native one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Someone else have a question? Echinaceas. Really nice perennial for here. And this comes in a multitude of colors as well. These are great color plants, summer color, to pop in between your evergreens just to get some bright colors out in there. Comes in purples, comes in pinks. They have one called powwow berry that is just eye-popping pink. You just like the color of her, her pink shirt out there. It is gorgeous. Great colors to mix out in the yard. Absolutely gorgeous. Perennials are a great way to bring in color in the yard. So roses. So this is one of the, what they call like a landscape rose or a ground cover rose. Uh, this one is a pink supreme, pink splash, is what they're calling this one. So a lot of people have very negative connotations about roses, right? A lot of work, bugs, disease, the list goes on. The ground cover roses are a great way for their gift summer color out in the yard. They're going to bloom most of the summer. They're very disease resistant and they don't have as much bug problems as the tea roses and the brandifloras that your grandmother grew. Uh, they're just a lot more easy care than what you guys have the connotation of the being. Yes? Do you need to deadhead those? These typically are self deadheading. If you want to encourage more bloom, you can deadhead and they'll bloom more proficiently for you, but you don't have to. So I have, along our driveway, we have 12 landscape roses. And we trim them back in the spring. Um, we feed them in water, but that's kind of it. We don't really deadhead at all. And they will literally bloom all summer for me. And they're absolutely gorgeous. Um, so it's, some, you know, it's, it's a good plant to think about. The other thing with mine is they actually stay evergreen in the winter. And I'm in a pretty cold spot. I'm at about 5,500. And mine stay evergreen in the winter time. Now, if we had a really, really cold winter for a long time, they would probably go a little more deciduous. Um, but they're, I've been very, very pleased with them. Mine get about three foot tall. If you want yours to stay lower, you can trim them to stay lower. <coughs> so about three by three, three by four is their, how they want to grow. Every once in a while, they'll send a strange branch off. I don't know what's up with that. If I just go out and trim it off, then it seems to be fine. Yes? Do the deer and javelina like the flower? The deer would? Yeah. Definitely. My, the javelinas, I've had not much problem with them bothering the roses. Uh, the deer probably would be interested in them. Can you do those in a container as well? Yes. They grow very nicely in containers. Um, they also have, these come in a multitude of colors. Reds, yellows, whites. They have one called amber. Um, so a nice one to throw out in the landscape. They also have a uh, new set of roses coming out, the shrub roses. Um, if, you're, if you've heard of the knockout rose. Yeah. Uh, so the shrub roses are grown on their own rootstock. So they're, they're again, they're very disease resistant, uh, but they also will bloom literally all summer long. They get about four foot by four foot, do nicely in containers. I have two containers. Uh, so good summer color. They will go more dormant in the winter time than these will, uh, but nice summer color for, for blooming, yes. Will the roses grow in higher elevations, like 7,600 feet? They probably would. Um, 
they would probably go more dormant in the winter time. Okay. So, and you probably would need to mulch over them a little more in the winter. Okay. Uh, but check out the shrub rose, the knockout roses. Good shrub for summer color. Good pop of color in the summer time. Um, this is also another good summer color. So this is a yucca, red yucca. This particular one is brake light yucca. So brake light has a much brighter uh, flower stock than the red. Regular red yucca has like a salmon-y color, much more salmon. This is much more darker red, but it also, the plant stays a little smaller. So it's a little bit more of a dwarf than the standard red yucca. Red yucca probably gets four by four. This one, probably about two foot, two by two. Will it grow in a container? Quite happily. So you can use it either way. Uh, the plant itself will stay evergreen in the winter time, uh, but the stalks are only gonna bloom in the summer. Yes, sir. Are they invasive? Invasive, no. Mm -hmm. Yep, they're very well behaved. So, nice plant for here. Very good, very drought hardy. If you're doing more of a zero scape type yard, but want some color, it's a great way to go. Yeah, very nice. A lot of the yuccas. This is a variegated one. There again, if you like variegated, <laughs> nice way, because you're getting that pop of color with the yellow, right? So this one's Adams. Oh, this one's Color Guard, Adams Needle. This one in the winter time, in the dead of winter, if it's really cold, I've seen it look a little sad sometimes, but it will pop right back out of it as soon as we warm up. And do not overwater this guy, because it'll go black. But nice, very drop hardy. Another good way to bring color, so this is barberry. The barberries are terrific. Anything in the barberry family, uh, they all have needles, little pokies, but that's okay. Uh, but barberries are, I love the colors that come out of barberries. They can be orange, they can be red, uh, they can be orange and red. They just give you really beautiful colors. Just nice to mix in with your evergreens. Uh, they do go dormant in the winter time, but that's okay because they're giving you color the rest of the time. Uh, this one I think is Orange Rocket, so it's a taller, more narrow uh, barberry. Uh, there's Crimson, which uh, gets about three foot, the spread's about three foot. There's Japanese, uh, there's just so many varieties of barberries. I really encourage you to look at them for bringing color into the yard. Very drought hardy once established. Uh, they tend to be very animal resistant um, because they do have those little sharp pokies on them. Uh, but you know, you're not messing with them much, so it doesn't really matter. You might be trimming them occasionally, but they're not a heavy maintenance plants. You're not going to have to be out there pruning them a lot because uh, they maintain their shapes. So you're not going to have to be messing with them too much, but just gorgeous colors. Yes. Is that shade or full sun? Full sun. Mm -hmm. It could tolerate shade and be fine with that, uh, but it likes the full sun. What are the minimum maximum heights that the berries plants? There, you, you name it, there's a height for it. So. Uh, I think Orange Rocket probably is about the tallest. I think it gets five. Uh, five foot tall, two foot wide. But they make, there's even like a little one that's like a little ball. You know? So there's all sizes of plants in between. So neat plant to look at. Um, also down here, I think we have a small fish. Another one for pretty color. So this one is the purple smoke bush. There's also a green smoke bush that has a really light uh, green color to it. Um, it's about eight foot tall, so maybe one that would fit into your smaller. Very drought hardy, so in the summertime it puts off a little uh, 
plume, I guess you call it, uh, which gives it its name for smoke bush. It's supposed to have like a smoke plume coming off of there. Very drought hardy. Just a nice, tough plant. But I love the color on it because it's a new, beautiful color out in the yard. It will go dormant in the wintertime. So go sleep. It's a pretty color. Um, I have a question. I have one that I've trimmed into a tree. Oh, yeah. And it doesn't lose its leaves. They just stay dead on the tree ah. on the, at the end of the year, and I have to strip it. Strip it off. Is that normal? Yes. Okay. If you were to, if you were to leave, so she's asking, the leaves stay on there. They go dead, but the leaves stay on there. Yeah. And, and there's actually quite a few trees that will do that. If you were to leave those leaves on there, when it pushes new growth in the spring, it'll it'll drop the leaves okay. then. Yeah, sycamores do the same thing. Oh, I love mine. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't have to go pull the leaves off. It just some people it bothers, some people it doesn't. Well, I just thought it was going to come off after I'd already cleaned up all of the leaves, and then I'd have a mess to clean up. Yeah. But if it waits until the next spring, I'm yeah. good with that. It will. Yeah. It'll just hold the snow on it, make it look pretty. There you go. <laughs> Uh, oh, look, beautiful fall color if you want to touch fall. So this is a tiger eye snack. Uh, look at the color on that. Doesn't that make you want to go eat pumpkin pie? Say again. Pumatus. Tiger eye. Oh, tiger eye sumac. 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 So this just screams fall. This is probably one of the first ones to turn. Uh, in our area for fall color. It doesn't get much taller than this, but there again, word of caution, ding, 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 it will spread. Oh. Okay, so be careful. You, you just, I have it in my yard, we have it near our <coughs> pond area. And trust me, it will spread. Out in front of Costco, as you're driving by, you know there's that bank, it kind of goes down. Look over there, about right now. It is just all down that bay. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous, and I love it. But be careful where you put it, because it will spread. But it doesn't get much taller than that. What about water? Very drought hardy. It's very, very drought hardy. There's another one, a smooth sumac that gets taller, probably about five foot tall does the same thing. And then there's another one that gets about eight to 10 foot tall. It's not quite as invasive, but it still will spread. So watch it. Yes. When you say it spreads, does it spread vegetatively or does it seed new plants? By roots. Okay. Yeah. So how do you keep it from, I mean, how do you stop the spreading? Does you actually have to go out there and hack on it. <laughs> yeah. So how much work do you? <laughs> yeah, we don't come to <laughs> Keep it in a pot. It will. You just have to watch your watering. Because you don't want to, it, it really doesn't like to be overly wet. Good drainage. It, it will take full sun. Oh, yeah. Loves the sun. Loves the sun. But beautiful fall color. Uh, like I said, it's got some taller cousins and some real tall cousins. The, the real tall one also puts on a like a four to five inch, not really a flower type thing, but a bright red uh, tip. Not really a flower. It's, it's almost fuzzy like. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool looking. It's like the wild sumac. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I have one. I have that in my yard too. It's actually beautiful. It really is. Uh, then we kind of get down into the grasses. So. The ornamental brasses, in my opinion, are often overlooked, but they are terrific in the yard. I like them because they add texture and they add movement in the yard. Uh, this one is the Shenandoah brass. So Shenandoah, look how pretty that is. So it has the red in it. So you're getting color in there as well. Um, but I love it because when the wind blows, you get that movement in there. Um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful grass. There's also, this is a dwarf maiden grass. Excuse 
me if I can. Yes. This one? Dwarf maiden grass. Grasses are terrific because they can be put into areas that are wet. So if you have a spot in your yard that's just like a boggy or wet area, they can go in there. But they can also go into those dry areas. So they're nice for that as well. Um, I like them because they just give you that movement in the yard. So pretty. Yes? Does that one spread? This one? The, yeah. They, it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, there's also uh, there's a, a mooly grass, a uh, pink mooly grass where the palms on it are kind of a dark pink to purple color. I think it's about three foot tall. And it's so pretty when the wind blows. It kind of, so they all bloom late summer and early fall. Uh, so it's another kind of a seasonal type thing. Gives you that late summer color out in there. Uh, and then, of course, a lot of you are familiar with the pampas grass, um, which is pretty, but they're again cautionary. Be careful with it. You know, it gets, <laughs> uh, and it can also reseed, so it kind of come up other places. So you do have to be careful with it. All of your grasses do want to be cut back, usually in end of February, first part of March. You do want to cut them back. A lot of people don't think to do that, uh, but if you want to keep them healthy, cut them back. Very important, especially in your pampas grass and your bigger grasses. Like how far down would you cut them? Like you cut them all the way down? I usually cut them um, two foot, three foot. Your pampas grass, you want to cut back about knee high. These guys, I would probably give them like, you know, 12 inches or so. Uh, but check into your ornamental grasses. There's a lot of them, yes. I have uh, a cluster of wild grass. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very beautiful in the summer and the fall. Is there anything wrong with cutting that back like in November? No. Cutting in the fall too? Yeah, you could cut it in the fall when it's done. You know, if it bugs you, you can certainly cut it back. I like to leave mine because I like this well in the fall. I like to leave it. Sometimes when it gets a few snowfalls on it, and these kind of get bent and ugly, I'll trim them back. You don't have to wait until February, March. You can certainly trim them whenever you want to. Um, is there anything up here I didn't cover? Yeah, that's right here. This right here. So this is um, Virginia Creeper. So this particular one, you can't, you can barely see it now because it's started to turn. Uh, but this one is star shower. So star showers, Virginia creeper, is actually a variegated Virginia creeper. So when it's green, before it started to turn color, it's uh, green and white. So your native Virginia creeper is just green. This one is variegated, green and white. But you can see it's starting to turn red. Gorgeous. I love fall. Uh, beautiful fall color. Great vine. Uh, it does, I was going to say, it does like a little bit of shade. Ken would probably argue with me. We argue all the time about what things do. Um, in my opinion, I think it, it's not going to like a really hot spot. Uh, it wants a little more shade. You wouldn't want to grow on a hot wall, a hot spot, you know. But like an eastern exposure, it would probably be fine. Or where it's getting some variegated sun, variegated. What's the word? Yeah. Thank you. Dappled sun coming through would be real happy. But beautiful fall color. Absolutely gorgeous. And that goes dormant. Does go dormant. You betcha. Uh, and then, of course, we have our autumn blaze maple, which is like the standard for fall, right? Absolutely gorgeous in the fall. We like, <laughs> we like, to, we like to sell the autumn blaze. Uh, which is a cross between a silver maple and a red maple. Uh, a little bit smaller leaf. Uh, we found that that does better here. It's a little bit faster growing than the traditional red maple. And the little bit smaller leaf holds up a little bit better here because of the wind that we have. Uh, the red maple, you can certainly grow it here, but it is no growing. So you've got to have patience. Yes, sir. 
Can you pruny? It probably could use some shaping. So, um, yeah, it's gotten a little long, you know, so it needs some shaping. But in your landscape, uh, it's not a heavy needing tree that needs a lot of pruning. Uh, but every tree always needs some shaping on the yard. The little one down below here, this is, let's see if I can do it with that. So this is another variety of sumac. This is a grow low sumac. So this one gets about three foot tall. And I can't remember the spread. Six to eight foot wide. So if you're trying to, if you got a big space or a hillside, this would be terrific for that. It will go dormant in the wintertime. Uh, most of the year it has a nice green leaf to it. Beautiful fall color, very drought hardy. So if you're looking for a low maintenance, this would be terrific to put out in there. Full sun. It is not invasive. So it's not going to be like this one where you have to go whack on it. What's the best time to plant that one? Because sir, fall is a terrific time to plant. Um, I love planting in fall because the soils are still really warm. So things are going to root out and get a good foothold. Uh, but it's not so stressful for them because we don't have the extremes in the temperature from cold to warm. And, uh, so they get a, a good foothold going before things go dormant. So even to put them in a pot as a container, mm -hmm. would you just still do that in the fall or would you wait till the spring? I think you can certainly do it now. The main thing you got to remember when you plant in the fall is you've got to, you still got a younger plant, so you've got to remember to winter water. Very important. A lot of people moving in from other places have never wintered water, and they don't think about it. Very important here to water in the winter time. Um, that plant that looks like lettuce over there? Yeah. Those two. Yeah. Okay, so these are uh, hookah. Uh, I love these plants. So you asked whether they were shade or sun. So I've grown them in both. Uh, so I always thought they needed shade, and I've grown them primarily in shade, but I just the caveat to that is I have these growing on my back patio in a pot in full hot sun on a baking hot patio and they do wonderfully but they also get adequate water consistently so yes you can flow them in the sun you can grow them in shade I love the hoop reds because the different types you can see the different colors you can get off of them uh, and they usually stay evergreen, even in the wintertime. That being said, in dead of winter, when it's really, really, really cold, they will show s some stress to them, uh, but they pop right back out of it. So I love the new growth. Somebody had a question. Yes, sir? Uh, back to the maple leaf. Mm -hmm. Can you grow Japanese maple here? <laughs> you can grow Japanese maple here. You have to be very selective in where you put it. Uh, they cannot tolerate our sun or our wind. So you have to have it in a spot where it's getting shade and no wind. <laughs> yeah. I grow it in a container up by my front door. So it gets shade and it doesn't get any wind on it. It is as happy as can be. Uh, they have one uh, called Coral Bark that I absolutely love because in the wintertime, because they lose their leaves, but the bark in the wintertime turns bright red. Uh, so it's absolutely gorgeous in the winter because of that red bark. And it's by my front door, so it's just, be, I put lights on it in the wintertime. Beautiful, you know, but you have to be careful where you put them. And they go terrific in containers. Yeah. What is the size of those? These guys, yeah. uh, they probably get about two foot by two foot. If you just let them go. And they grow in containers or in the ground. Um, I'll just hit mums while we're here too, because mums scream fall, right? This is a great one for late summer color in your perennial beds. Um, and they come back year after year after year. And they get bigger every year. <laughs> I love mums. And they come in so many different colors. 
So when, when a lot of your early summer perennials are done blooming, these guys are just starting. So they're terrific. And just really, really hardy. And they take the sun, right throw into those full hot spots. And now's the time to buy them. It's terrific. Be careful. The ones that they grow in the flower shops, uh, those are more, there's a little bit different variety. And they're not going to do as well. These are a true garden in the garden. Oh, yeah. They're going to be terrific. So get your moms in. Yay. This guy too. So this is a euphorbia. This is rainbow ascot. I love. Look at this together. And that pretty. Look at the color in that. It's beautiful. And this, believe it or not, is an evergreen. Does very well. Uh, very drought hardy. Does terrific in pots. I love. This is rainbow ascot one. Takes the heat. It blooms in the summertime. A real. Not a. a not what you think of as a traditional bloom. It has like a chartreuse green blossom on it. Really, really pretty, very unique. How big do they get? My, I think they get about, I want to say two foot tall. Like a about two bush. foot wide. Little bush. In the ground. You could grow it in the ground or a container. Either way. Drought tolerant? Very drought tolerant. Yep. It would go terrific with your succulent family. Uh, it would be really pretty with uh, like a dragon blood sedum around it, a container. It would do very nicely. How about a long dragon blood? Yeah, certainly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, these are really nice ones as well. You know, one thing I didn't hit on, and I guess I, I never think to hit on shade plants, because I, you know, a lot of people don't have shade here, but as landscapes mature, a lot of us end up with a lot more shade uh, than what we start with. But a lot of the, um, I don't know if I'm going to buzz or not. No. So this is holly. So the hollies here definitely need shade. Uh, if you've come from the Midwest, you or California even, you grew holly out in the full sun. Uh, here they need the shade or they will definitely burn. Uh, but the hollies, with the red berries, how gorgeous is that? Uh, but definitely, you could grow it on an eastern exposure of your house where it's probably get morning sun. Or there again, under where if you have like a pine forest and you want to grow something underneath those, you could do holly. Also, yews are another good shade plant that also have the red berries on them as well. Uh, the holly, there's a lot of different varieties of holly as well. And tall and skinny, the short and fat, so, but nice evergreen. But you got to be careful where you put them. You can't be out in full hot sun, or you'll have a very unhappy plant. I think I covered it. The other thing I want to hear about, oh, one more thing. A uh, great way to bring color, especially up close to the house, uh, is containers. A lot of people don't think about that. But bringing in a ceramic container up close, or even out far in the yard, is a good way to bring in color. Uh, a lot of people don't think about it, but it's, they're getting no fuss, no muss way to bring in color. Especially if you throw an evergreen in it. It's just one way to, to think about color without using a plant. Uh, but variety of kind of reds, this is kind of a teal. There's blue, green, uh, just all different kinds of ways. And these pots, they will take the winter and be fine. You don't have to worry about them in the winter time. Because they are heavy. Yeah. Trust me, they're not going anywhere once you get plants in the soil. Yeah. Okay, so we're, I think I went a little bit over. Uh, so you guys are free to go. So if you have any questions, Feel free to ask questions, but don't feel me. If you want to get up and leave, go ahead. No problem. Thank you.